Bonjour, je suis Sonia Saralipsic et voici le deuxième interview de cette série consacrée au féminisme et judaïsme que je réalise avec la vidéaste Abigail Hirsch ici à Montréal. Nous sommes en janvier 2010 et j'ai le plaisir d'être en compagnie du rabbin Sandy Eisenberg Sasso. Nous avons fait une interview avec elle au sujet de son itinéraire comme femme rabbin. Mais euh, Rabbi Sandy est aussi écrivain, elle écrit des livres pour enfants et cette interview va porter sur ses livres. Hi, I am Sonia Sa Lipsic. It's the second interview with uh, Rabbi Sandy Eisenberg Sasso about uh, all the video with Abigail Hirsch about uh, Judaism and feminism. We talk with uh, Rabbi Sandy Eisenberg Sasso about uh, the to be woman and rabbi, but she is a writer too. She is writing for the children, and now I want to ask her some question about this. Uh, rabbi Sandy as Amber Sasso, the first book, it's uh, but God remembered story of women from creation to the promised land. With your American accent, it is yes, but God remembered stories of women from creation to the promised land. Which editor? It is uh, published by uh, Jewish Lights. Ok. Dans ce livre, euh, le rabbin Sandy Eisenberg Sasso nous parle de figures de femmes de la Bible, Lilith, la première femme de la Bible, Asher, pardon, euh, Sérar, la fille d'Asher, la petite fille de Jacob, euh, Bithia, donc la fille de Pharaon, et les filles de Tsénophrade. Et donc je lui ai posé quelques questions à ce, au sujet de toutes ces femmes. In this book. You speak about Lilith, the first woman in the world, uh, about Sarah, the little girl, little daughter of uh, Jacob, and about uh, Bithia, uh, the, 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 the daughter, daughter of the Pharaoh. Pharaoh, and the daughters of Tsenophrad. And it's for the children. Um, Rabbi Sandy, what about Lilith? Because uh, I, I have the feeling yeah, that you, you go on the Midrash about Lilith. J'ai le sentiment que vous continuez le récit du Midrash au sujet de Lilith. Yes, of course, the, the uh, traditional Midrash of Lilith depicts uh, this first woman who was created before Eve, according to the Midrash, as a, uh, almost uh, as a demoness. You know, a very negative portrayal of her because she wishes to be equal to Adam. And, and of course she, she escapes and she becomes a demoness who threatens men and male children and then of course Eve is created uh, from Adam's rib according to the Midrash, not wishing to be equal. Well, I retell this story uh, for children in which uh, Lilith and Adam are getting along quite well in the garden. Uh, they are created equal, but that uh, somehow they can't negotiate that equality very well and that um, Lilith leaves. In this story, she is uh, not a demoness. Uh, and the fault for the breakup of the relationship uh, is both Adam's and hers. That the two of them cannot negotiate the equality, and God is sad. God wishes that man and woman could be equal, it's just that man and women were not able to make a go of it at the beginning. Adam. And then we wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> bon, on sait que le midrash de Lilith, en fait, qui était la première femme avant Ève et qui voulait l'égalité avec Adam, est devenue une figure de démon dans le dans le dans l'histoire narrative juive. Et donc le Rabbi Sandy Eisenberg Sasso, comme écrivain ici, nous raconte une histoire où Dieu est plutôt triste que euh, Adam et Lilith n'arrivent pas à cette égalité. Et quand je lui pose la question à quelle est la fin, ben, elle me dit ben, « on va bien voir ce qui va se passer ». C'est comme une sorte un petit peu d'ouverture optimiste, optimiste euh, perspective. Perhaps, euh, if I read the very end, you see where it goes. After a while, Adam found comfort with a new companion named Eve. Adam called his new companion the first woman, because he wanted to forget Lilith, but in the course of time, um, people forgot Lilith's story and how men and women were once equal. But God remembered Lilith and God named the night after her. That is why in Hebrew the night is called Lilac. 
Some say Lilith stretches the night sky over all God's creation. She spreads a canopy of stars to light the dark and calls each star by name. Ok, thank you very much. Alors, on ne peut pas parler de toutes les figures de femmes de ce, de ce livre, mais je vous le recommande. Voilà, je le mets à l'écran de notre petite caméra pour aborder maintenant un deuxième ouvrage euh, à propos de la manière dont on utilise le langage. In God's name. Oui, donc dans ce livre, le rabbin Sandy euh, Eisenberg Sasso essaye de montrer comment le langage influence les comportements. In this book, you try to show how the language uh, has an influence about the behavior of about our behaviors. So, what do you want to tell about that? Well, in in this book, I want to say that people name God. Um, out of their own experience and that there are names for God that are very masculine and there are names for God that can be feminine. Uh, so that uh, in the book I say the young woman who nursed her newborn son called God mother. The young man who held the hand of his baby daughter called God father. And so I have people in the book coming up with different names based on where they are in their life and, in, and they argue about which is the best name. But in the end, they come together and they decide all the names for God are good and they call God one. It's for the children for, for which for, age? Oh, for like four to eight. So, donc c'est pour les enfants for de, three to eight. de trois à huit ans. Voilà, c'est le deuxième livre. Et enfin, le troisième livre pour conclure cette interview, vous savez que Noé dans la Bible a une femme, mais on ne connaît pas son nom. Il faut aller le chercher dans le Midrash, c'est-à-dire cette interprétation orale de la Bible. It is very much a Midrash on the Shema. Oh, you understand French now. Ah, oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, donc, euh, son troisième livre, c'est... Noah's Wife, the story of Naama. Naama, voilà, vous connaissez son nom. Donc, euh, euh, je vais poser la question de, de savoir, euh, qu'est-ce qu'il y a, est-ce que c'est une réhabilitation de toutes ces femmes dans la Bible qui n'ont pas de nom It is a rehabilitation of all the women uh, in, in the Bible. We, 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 are, we, we don't know the name. Nahama is the name of uh, Noé. What do you want to, to tell us? Well, um, I was always fascinated by what Noah's wife did on the ark. Everything I read had her cleaning up the mess. Not something I found very, uh, you know, something I wanted to be a model for me. So I looked in the Midrash to see, traditional Midrash, to see what I would find. And I found two names. It said that Noah's wife was called Naama because her deeds were Ni'imin, pleasing. Yes. Uh, and then I found another name uh, for Noah's wife, Enzera, which means mother of seed. And when I put the two names together, I, I had a story in my imagination. And the story was that um, Nama collected two of every seed of the plants, two of every plant, and planted uh, a garden on the ark. And after the flood, she replanted the earth's garden. Uh, because we tell the story of Noah saying, saving all the animals, but what about all the vegetation? What about uh, all the plants and the flowers? And so I gave Noah's wife an important role about uh, saving the earth. Ok, donc, euh, euh, merci beaucoup. Euh, J'étais ravie d'avoir fait cette interview avec vous. Les livres, ça ne se raconte pas seulement, ça se lit, books we have to read. Yes. Donc, je ne peux que vous conseiller la lecture de ce livre, dont vous retrouvez toutes les références en lien. We will find all the references in link uh, à côté donc de cette vidéo. Voilà, nous venons de recevoir le rabbi Sandy Eisenberg Sasso ici à Montréal en janvier 2010, donc euh, 2010-2010. Yes. Et, et pardonnez-moi encore pour mon anglais et merci beaucoup et à bientôt. Au revoir.